markets. So why did we work with Facebook? Explain <coughs> the audience because they are. With this is quite a funny story. I have to tell you the story. Actually, <laughs> I was sitting in Barcelona on a panel, and uh, it was a few days, two days before, I think. Facebook bought WhatsApp. WhatsApp. Well, yeah, like a week before. Isn't for a pretty it? cheap price. And then um, <laughs> uh, the guy announced on this panel, now WhatsApp going to offer as well free voice. Was it? Yeah, not only yeah. not free SMS. So that was, <laughs> and we just announced our big alliance and partnership with Facebook. But still, I think it was a, it was a pretty good. <clears throat> No, as I was saying earlier, I mean, I, 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 we, we consider ourselves a, a friendly member of the ecosystem. That, of course, doesn't mean a stupid member of the ecosystem. It's a friendly member of the ecosystem, uh, of course. And, and that means many, many things. Uh, in the case of Facebook, um, we saw a great opportunity to work together in penetrating our markets with um, um, internet access. I mean, they, they have an interest to get more users on board, and we have an interest to get more users on board. So we... Um, uh, actually proudly, proudly decided to um, partner with them in bringing uh, Facebook in the case of uh, Paraguay and Guarani, uh, and also in the case of Tanzania and Swahili. Um, we worked together in a, in a major campaign. Um, actually, it was the first TV campaign they've ever done, uh, and we produced that together. And, and Luciana can talk about uh, the wonderful job we did, actually, in terms of uh, putting those two brands together and in, uh, in, in making a difference in the market. And if, um, and if we look at you know, numbers and success, um, we added um, around 45% new um, users on the go, data users on the go in the case of Paraguay. And after 10 days that we finished that, that promotion, um, we've seen 38% of those new to data users pay for mobile data or data on the go. So you know, very clearly, um, is something where we, we saw both companies uh, being extremely successful at uh, doing that. And, and I must say that, you know, of course, we don't partner with everybody. It's very difficult. We have a, a limited capacity. And as we were saying earlier, um, there's just a, a number of messages that we can give to the market, right? I mean, we, uh, one of the things that we've been uh, getting better and better at is, is at selecting our battles, which are the things where we think we can make a difference. As I said earlier, it was music. Um, there was an opportunity to capture the attribute, the music attribute. We never said we were going to create the application. We just said we can create an experience that makes a difference, and we've been able to capitalize on that experience. We said we want to be friendly members of the ecosystem. We selected one of the most relevant ones, Facebook. We work with them, and we've been extremely successful in that relationship as well. And you should expect to see a lot more of that coming as a company. There is a question. I think we should take it. It's on another theme. It's, it's regarding the music service. So maybe yeah. you can. Uh, okay, should I? Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, actually, to, to be honest, I, I don't know exactly how uh, successful the music service has been in, in some of the markets. So maybe you could tell us a little bit more about that. And uh, the question is actually um, also on uh, if you think an operator in the long run will have such services, if it fits into an operator. Yeah. Or if it's more, uh, I mean, it could be limitations for the music service that is connected to an operator. Uh, I think the. And, um, and if you possibly would consider, I mean, if it's very successful to spin it off in the long run. Look, I think the. Um, maybe I answer this and then you can jump in, you guys. As well. I think when it comes to the, to, the, to the music side, my viewpoint nowadays is that if your operator does it right, the operator is in a very strong position. Because uh, we have branded it not. Deezer, we have not branded uh, Spotify, we have branded it Tigo Music. So the Tigo Music brand is a connection with the consumer. The consumer has the account with us. If he, if he drops out of Tigo, he loses his playlist, he loses his friends list and all those kind of things. So we create the stickiness. And on top of what uh, David explained, we go even beyond just the, 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 the playlist. Hence, I think the, um, the, the product itself it has, has a very strong stickiness and is very well suited with, uh, with an operator. <coughs> But it's embedded in the whole system, so it's not going to be a standalone business. I think the, the, the key point more is for us uh, to, um, to, to, to bundle, market it right, and, uh, and, uh, and sell it. Spin-off wouldn't, wouldn't help, because nobody buys, or oh, let's put it this way, a Claro customer would not be allowed to buy a Tigo Music uh, service, for example, in, uh, in, uh, in the respect. Let, uh, sorry, let, let me chip in on, on the spin-off. During the break, somebody asked me, well, um, at the last Capital Markets Day in, in February 2013, um, you talked about online as a standalone pillar. 
and that is not something that we're seeing here today. What's the, what's, what's the reason for that? Um, and I think it has to do exactly with that thinking around, you know, let's spin off some stuff. Um, as we're one and a half years on uh, at this Capital Markets Day, um, one of the things that we've come to realize and that we've, that we've learned in the market is that online is such an integral part of what we're doing in our core mobile and fixed business um, that it doesn't make sense to see it as a standalone, as something spin-offable. It is really part of the, really of the experience of the circle that you see, of the circle, circle of experiences. The same holds true for mobile financial services. Somebody asked me, isn't that something that you should sort of keep separate and then spin off? And the answer is, well, we're using the same Salesforce. Uh, we're definitely um, sort of using the same handsets. We're using the same consumer. Um, and it's just integral part of the digital experience that we're, that we're, that we're really providing our consumers. And the data are there. I mean, we showed them in terms of upward increase, in terms of churn reduction, churn reduction. By, by, uh, by 50%. So that's not the point. But the, the, the philosophy, and this is important to understand, the philosophy is we do those services or some of our services ourselves. On the other ones, we're going to teaming up. So if you become a TV customer, you have the benefit of being with Facebook and other services, but you have the benefit as well, exclusive, to be with uh, the TV services, which is, uh, which is going very well. And I think maybe if you get a microphone for Martin, Bill, can you hold one second? This is important because it, the, the question will be after music, what comes? And the next, if you say entertainment is a kind of key feature, it's video and it's sports and video. And maybe Martin can describe how do we compete versus Netflix, which is a much more complicated animal because they create their own content. Okay. Uh, Mirado, that we see over here, it's an example where we take a different avenue that we have done with music. I think one thing does not exclude the other. But you have the two fundamental models. Partnership, if you want a partner, you should partner up with the best possible candidate in the market. But in some cases, there will be opportunities in the market where we see there is no strong leader, there is strong growth, and there's room for taking a position in an early stage. So in the case of, for example, video, uh, OTT video, there is no strong play in our markets. And we can very well team up with someone else but that doesn't exclude that we try to pursue something on our own. And that makes a lot of sense when we now control content, exclusive sports content as an example. I think that uh, it is a great opportunity for us that we can develop our own service in some cases. But we will do that opportunistically. It will depend case on case. And the USP we have, just to be very clear, this one as well, the USP we have is we focus on the local content. We're not, we're not competing on global levels. We're going, we're going to be the local experts, giving the local content, the local entertainment, the local services. And then, as I said, you can have Netflix in the future and the Tigo OTT Absolutely. service. And I would say, on, to add to that, our advantage in these markets is that it's not only the content. I mean, we are in a unique position. You all heard it here. First of all, we have millions and millions of customer contacts. We own the relationship with customers. And secondly, everyone in Europe and North America used to pay with credit cards. It doesn't exist in our markets. So how do we handle that? We handle the payment solutions, MFS. We have the local shops. We have the points of presence. We handle the cash in our uh, markets and societies. So I think that puts us in a unique position. And we can use our existing strengths as a springboard for whatever we do. Bill. Uh, can you, do you have an exclusive relationship with uh, Facebook? And can you, port, can you take your MFS and port it to other countries where you don't have a mobile telephone service because of Facebook, or is it portable at all? Uh, and then finally, what, what's gonna, wh where is Rocket now? Are you going to talk about that at some yeah. point? Maybe we start with um, the Facebook, and maybe, I mean, it's, it's kind of, in our market, it's kind of exclusive, but I think it's more important what did Facebook do for our brand? Because I think the, the philosophy we have is the big guys, we're happy to join. Premium brands, we're happy to team up and, and work with, as long as we see the benefit on our brand side. And maybe, Luciana, you say yeah. something, and then I come back to Rocket. I, I, think, I think in the case of Facebook, what we saw is, first of all, there is a very important <laughs> insight that uh, came from us knowing these markets, which is the local language was key, like the Guarani in, in Paraguay and the Swahili in Tanzania was as loved by the consumers, surprisingly even to us, as you know the fact that it was free for, for a period of time. It, and, and, it, and 
there was a sense of pride in the consumer of Tigo being a, a brand that has been in the market for a long time, being the ones bringing this to them. And it's true that we, when we talked to Facebook, we said that, we said, you know, the content in these local languages are limited. You know, so if you want people to really uh, be using it, it needs to be in their own language. So I think it creates this connection with consumers and with the brand that is really important. I think the other aspect of it that I want to touch is there is a habit that's formed about using things on the go, okay, for consumers. As from the moment they start using uh, Facebook and they have it always available, they learn that they can use their smartphone everywhere they are, which is not natural in the beginning. We see the behavior of consumers, they start using only like in their houses, in Wi-Fi, the same way they would use a computer, right? So there is an educational aspect of it that's like long lasting afterwards. So I think, you know, brand wise, that's the, the proximity and this kind of pride somehow, because it was kind of a kind of a local brand bringing this Facebook, you know, to them in their local language. Uh, being cutting edge, and at the same time, this educational aspect of using on the go that's long lasting after that. Mari, you want to talk about is MFS exportable? Now that's a that's that that's a very good, very good and relevant question. Um, in the beginning, we thought yes. Um, right now, we tend to say um, maybe you could do it, but then again, would you want to do it now? Because we have a huge opportunity in the markets where we're active, um, and. Right now, we're creating revenue on products that didn't even exist during the capital markets day in February of 2013. So the industry is evolving at such a rapid pace that we are really trying to deploy as many resources as we can locally to broaden our product spectrum. And what we see is uh, uh, there's banking products. I mean, we, we, we sort of lead the charge in innovation in East Africa. I think we really have that hat on now. Um, and have taken it over from 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 Mpesa. Um, I think we now have the most innovative service that there is um, uh, with the Wikisa um, example that we had with the interoperability, uh, with the bank integration that we're doing, um, and in building that ecosystem in the markets in which we're active. I think that is very very much the focus of what we're doing now. Um, and right now we don't have any plans to take it outside of our own footprint, even though technically it would be a possibility. In Tanzania, for instance, you were not the first uh, to have a mobile, uh, mobile payment system or a payment system. And now you've just taken market share. And can you tell us quite why you've been so su successful in Tanzania? Um, I think there's a number of reasons why, we're why, why the local team is doing extremely well. I think the first one is um, definitely around the distribution system that these guys have built. Um, the second um, is um, around the product innovation. I mean, we're the, we're the first ones to introduce um, inter-country inter um, uh, uh, transfer, so you can now transfer uh, money from uh, Tanzania to Rwanda and from Rwanda to Tanzania. Um, and we're doing that. We will continue to do that with other countries. We're the first one to do the interoperability between operator. We're now interoperating uh, with Airtel and Zentel, and it's a question of time before the entire market becomes interoperable. So I think we have a local team that's very much on the ball um, that's managed, uh, managed to do that. And just for you, Bill, and for anyone else, our new recruited head of MFS, Greg, if you stay up, stand up for a second. That's him. If you have questions, go to him afterwards. He can answer every detail nowadays. And he, he has an opinion or two on, uh, on, uh, Maybe on one word, as well. One word, Bill, on that. <laughs> one word on, uh, on, uh, on Rocket, because it's right. We, we didn't touch it too much, because the focus was really on Latin America and uh, on the three key aspects for us today, Colombia, the, uh, the targets, and the digital lifestyle execution. That doesn't mean our view on Rocket has changed at all. It, I think uh, it's a fantastic business opportunity. I think if you look at uh, Africa, they're growing extremely fast. We see the e-commerce business uh, uh, building out very fast. We see the kind of traction of the business. And um, it's, a, it's an amazing opportunity because there is nothing else. Um, with the partnership now we brought in with MTN, for example, you even get scale in terms of, of territory. So it is, it is a great opportunity. Equally, in Latin America, it's a bit different, of course, because um, they don't have all the big assets uh, in, in one holding company. But even those assets we invest in, uh, or the joint venture has been investing in, it has been uh, very successful. One thing has changed compared to the old view of, or the view of the old management. We don't need it to consolidate anymore because we have realized there are much more digital initiatives which are very, very close to our business. 
which we have to focus manpower and financial resources on, and which is going to drive the value much faster, particularly on the entertainment side, where Rocket or, the, or Rocket Ventures are not that active, and when it comes to the, to the mobile banking side. And we've proven as well at the same time during the last 18 months that we can execute those ones. So we, we, there was always a concern, can we uh, migrate the telecom company into this kind of hybrid we are nowadays uh, of, of the digital side? And that is, yes, the case. Hence, we decided to deconsolidate the business. Hence, we decided not to go um, for, for, uh, for consolidation on the long term. And we have to decide as well that we do the capital allocation when it comes uh, necessary, but not as a kind of must have for us. But in terms of the, the story, nothing has changed. It's one of the most amazing stories. And uh, if you want to do, do know more, talk uh, to the Rocket guys, for example, and, and uh, let them tell you what, uh, what stories they're creating there. But it was not the focus this time. I think there was a question over there. Yes. Yes, Thomas Heath here again. Just to follow up from Stefan's question on, on music, to, to clarify there. So do you see uh, Tigo Music then as being a service for Tigo sub subscribers only and a Clara subscriber being forced then to either move to Tigo or, or pick a Clara Music yeah. uh, service? And isn't it a little dangerous to, to have this telco vertical view? I mean, it reminds a little bit of tell it to email before people switch to, to Gmail for interoperability 10 years later. Thank you. Yeah, this is exactly the, uh, the risk you have. Then again, email is a small telco business. We are in the entertainment business, I respect. And the difference is different. Uh, the difference is, uh, as I mentioned, it's not just that we're providing a service everyone can copy. Yes, streaming service, everyone can copy. But we have done is we have built uh, the local presence. We have built our own constant tours. We have people like, well, you can talk about it, like QNS and, and so forth and so forth. So we go much beyond other ones are doing. The problem you have as a company is you have to stay ahead of the curve because the other ones will start to copy you. But that's the normal business you know uh, you, you have uh, nowadays anyhow when you have the conversion between media and telecom that you, you need to be um, leading uh, in terms of innovation as well. The good point, however, is, and that is what uh, they said as well, we have the brand perception now. And once you have the brand perception, it's very, very powerful. And uh, it, uh, it, it keeps you driving through the kind of uh, process. But I don't believe that our USP in three years is music. The other one will catch up. So our USP in three years will be completely different. And maybe, David, what, what is the next well, USP? Yeah, I was going to say that um, maybe there's a difference when you look at Claro. Um, I think they took the approach of creating their own app. As a matter of fact, they bought a company in Brazil to deliver their own app. And that has not been our approach. We, we don't think we can create the best music app in the world. If we thought that, then that's the approach we would be taking. But we actually um, decided that we wanted to partner uh, with different music services. It's, again, it's, it's about creating an experience. Um, that experience is music streaming. That experience is now uh, with Kelo as well on video concerts. Uh, that's another partner that's coming into the um, music uh, umbrella. And it's also. You know, what, what do we do in our other properties? What do we do in concerts? How do we approach uh, sponsorships? How do we promote music with uh, plans that we're trying to sell or devices that we're trying to sell? So it's, uh, um, I, I, I get your point, and it's a very valid point. And I think that, that, again, from the very beginning, that was precisely one of the mistakes that we did not uh, want to create. We, we wanted to make sure that we were bringing the best possible experience in music to our consumers. And, and it's all about the experience. It's not about programming an application maybe, in this case. Maybe just adding what that is saying, it's, it's not selling just the subscription, but because you see a lot of operators selling the subscription to Spotify. It's how we went about the 360 approach we took to selling the service. It was educating the consumer, teaching them what the, you know, what the system was offering, but enhancing that solution as well with our own creation. For instance, we have what we call the Music Hub, where the subscriber can actually do his own playlist, which is a playlist that resides not on the user platform, but actually on the system we created. And it's a system that also creates a community effect where they can share the playlist. We actually rank the playlist. So it's creating, as David was pointing out, a, a different approach to how they interact with the music service that we're delivering. It's not just the subscription to the library of content, but rather you know, the, the, the broader scope of what they can do with what we are bringing to market, as Luciana pointed out. We're essentially introducing this you know, these digital solutions to a market that has been historically underserved. So it's going way beyond just selling the subscription and, and, and just getting that. And again, the proof is in the pudding, as we say. We are the number one now in terms of music in, in this country. And 
if, if you can talk to David later on or go over to the music side, we are so strong now in music terms that we create number one hits. We bring artists come to us, say, can you promote our songs, and we make the number one uh, artist out of this. There was one more question there, and then we have there. one more there. Okay. Uh, yes, Lena Stubay from Carnegie. I was wondering a little bit about your cooperation with your sister companies. Because if you talk about going into OTT, um, you have MTG with a via play app. Is that something or functionality that you could just you know, buy from them and take over and launch? Or how does that work? Would you develop your own? No, I mean, the, uh, as we said earlier, we, we love to team up with very strong brands. MTG is a very nice strong brand as well, I have to say. Uh, so where it makes sense, of course, we cooperate, but we go for the best product. So it's, uh, it's an arm's length relationship. But um, if there's opportunity to work together, we work together. On the OTT side in particular, there's a technical platform which you can share, uh, which is a point. But again, the rights are done locally, so it's, it's, uh, you have to be on the execution side, probably, on, on locally. There was one question there. Thank you. It's Eric Pers at Danske Bank again. Uh, I was curious about local content. You've, you've mentioned it in a couple of contexts, uh, both TV and, and music. And, and Martin has talked throughout the year about the importance of getting further local content deals uh, beyond this, in particular, I understand the, the big you know, football rights you have in Paraguay and Bolivia. C can you give us an update on that? C are you uh, on your way to achieve further uh, big content, local content deals? And um, if you could give an indication of what, what, how much are you spending on local content or content in general? Well, that's the point, I think. The, we, we, we're progressing, but to be honest, if you go, and go to Africa, for example, we're more, more so, there is very limited. Sometimes uh, content you can buy with very limited structure. <coughs> um, I would more come from the angle, if, if I would sit in, in your chair for the time being, is there a risk that we're going to see a kind of cost inflation because of, uh, of those kind of things? The good news is our markets are so uncompetitive that nobody cares. So we're buying football rights for seven years for a price that uh, you can dream of normally in, uh, in other places. Which again, just illustrate if you go early, if you go ahead of the, of the curve and, and invest in those kind of franchise on an early basis, you have, uh, you have a much better economic. So content costs at this stage uh, are not a, not a big issue. At least the local cost, if you go for the more international global cost, it's, uh, it's a different case. Probably, but it's, it's, it's nothing, nothing major. And, yeah. and probably another important point is <clears throat> it's not only about owning that content, it's how you evolve that content into something that ends up representing the digital lifestyle. So you know, a lot of this content never before had been transmitted in high definition or with multiple cameras or available in a smartphone application to enjoy multiple screens. So also um, you know, our, our strategy is not only to get this um, uh, local content where, where we see very clear opportunities in many cases, it's also then working it through, all, through our system to take it to, to a different level. And, and again, with that, creating a long-standing differentiation in the market, something that you know, we can work with for many, many years to come. So the last question was somewhere there. Hi. Um, just, I guess, could you give a bit more color on what the costs are behind all the, um, all the different concepts that you've got, which is obviously one of the most successful ones recently? And is it, is it a profitable business just off high utilization, or do you need to see a decrease in churn and an increasing subscriber base for it to be a success? I can answer the, the last question. If you see a decrease of 50% in churn, it is very profitable. I mean, and we also see I an wish we could have more like this. In, a 25% in <laughs> increase in ARPU as well. And the cost, so, ones, I mean, we can yeah. indicate the cost. We, it's, I mean, we, are, we are bound by contract. The cost is below $3 per subscriber, and, and what they actually, the upsell that they have in the, play, in the plans that they acquire with the subscription is significantly higher. So we're making positive margin on, on the subscriptions. But it's also on the data usage as well, because obviously to stream the music they connect, they use uh, you know, data connectivity. And, and what we've seen is, as I mentioned, 25% increase in ARPU, and it has a direct impact on churn. I mean, three, two thirds less churn on our subscriber, which obviously enhances the, the mobile ARPU we already have. So it's, it's, it's a huge value creator. Probably the, the other aspect is just attracting this consumer that is naturally the one that's gonna consume more. So you know, that's 
yeah, the consumer we want. That's so the, something that I asked. Thank you for that. The idea was really, as I said, to give you a glimpse of the kind of, of future things we're doing, the the day-to-day the, the -day discussions we have internally as well. How, how do you transform all these kind of ideas into into a product, into a marketing strategy, into a brand, into uh, towards a customer? Um, I can see Chico Music creates a lot of interest, so um, we all invite you to come to, we just secured the Rolling Stones, Esteban, mm -hmm. isn't it? In uh, <laughs> Medellin. In March. So maybe we make a little show for case for, for our shareholders in Medellin around the concert, how we do and, things, and uh, what how we execute in the market. And, and how we execute in the market. So you can see a bit more the kind of uh, livelihood. I say this with the careful looking at Tim if we're going to do this, but uh, I think we need <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you.